What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and the reason I've got one headphone in is simply because I'm going through my Premier League predictions from the 2019-2020 season. Now, what's really weird about this video is I released this video literally eight days ago last year and we've literally only just finished the season. So, I'm going to be listening to that video while communicating here. Now, we went with number one which was Manchester City. Now, obviously, as we all know, Manchester... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, Jesus. Manchester... Fuck off! Manchester City finished second in the Premier League. It was, a, it was a disappointing season for Manchester City when so much was built up and hyped, but they never replaced company. And that was their issue. Defensively, they were poor. Um, they weren't as, as good going forwards as usual. However... They were still solid enough to win the league. Um, but in terms of, of Premier League, defensively, they were they were shit, to be honest. They were they were just they never replaced company and I just think they give too many goals away. Liverpool obviously are very good in defence and they just that was the area that's cost them the title. Second I went Spurs. What the fuck was I thinking when I did this? Was I pissed? Um yeah, obviously they'd just been in the Champions League final. I thought they would be given money to rebuild, and they did spend money, and they just they just wasted it. I think Lacelso has not been as great as they were expecting, and Dombele certainly not done as well as expected. Fernandez, Galson Fernandez, basically done nothing. Um, none of their signings, all of us are like screaming at me. Fantastic. So, yeah, obviously they didn't finish second. Liverpool. To finish third, I'm saying nothing. They won the league. Job done. Fourth, I go Chelsea. So finally one that I got right. Uh, I did think Chelsea would stay fourth because I thought that, you know, Frank would utilise the team and, and he, he has done that. He, he brought them all together. Mason Mount's had a terrific season. Um, you know, Williams proves that he's not quite, you know, a write-off at any level yet. So... Yeah, Giroud come back into form after Janu January as well and was put back in the team. So, yeah, I went Chelsea fourth and, and I got that one right. Thank God. It's hilarious. Uh, I, I went Everton fifth. And um, the reasons I give for Everton finishing fifth was about bringing in a centre-back, bringing in a centre-midfielder, a striker who can score goals. And we were linked with all of these great players last couple of gay days. Decore, Zuma was coming back, we were getting a strike because oh, I was bids were flying here there, and everywhere and we signed Alex Rober. I'll come on here and I absolutely blasted Marcel Brands and the entire board and then I got blasted by not all of you lot but some of you lot and uh, look how shit that ended up. So we'll leave it there. I'll put it there and would be fifth and we had a stinker. So for six I get stuck. Um, I sit there with Man United and Arsenal. How wrong was that? Uh, I go Man United sixth. Um, they actually finished third. I don't even know how, how Solskjaer managed to do that, apart from the fact that he signed Bruno Fernandes. And that essentially transformed their season. Um, they went from being probably the eighth or ninth best team in the in the league to being the third by the end of the season, which was... A phenomenal achievement, really, to Solskjaer. Um, interesting fact, if Everton had we got the same amount of points that he got in the uh, in the Martinez first season, which was 72, Everton would have finished third this season as well. So, interesting stat there. But, yeah, I went Man United sixth. Arsenal seventh. And the reason I said Arsenal seventh was, going forward, I said they'd be clinical, they'd be good. Um, they'd be... They'd be, you know, they've got a good front line, which Lacazette, Aubameyang, and obviously seventy-two million pound Pepe at the time. Defensively, it would cost them. And if you look at their table, they are eighth. They conceded forty-eight goals, um, which was which was poor. <laughs> Looking at the rest of them, which which was poor. So, uh, yeah, defensively cost them. They actually finished eighth. So there you go. Eighth. I'll go Leicester. I went Leicester. They obviously didn't finish eighth. Um, they had a phenomenal season. Let's not get this twisted. They had a phenomenal season. But to say they bottled Champions League football is an understatement. I mean, 
the last run of form they had after lockdown was horrific. I know they had injuries, but it was uh, it was poor. And Brendan Rodgers, again, he's known for being the manager when Liverpool bottled the league. He's also the manager when Leicester bottled the Champions League. But there you go. West Ham, I went ninth. Oh, fuck you now. I mean, they were, they were, they were in real trouble up until, up until the last sort of four or five games, they were in real trouble. Antonio scored something like six, no, eight goals in six games or six goals in four games. Um, scored four goals in one game, so let's, let's not get it too twisted. But um, West Ham just come good at the end. Otherwise, I suspect they might have been very much within, you know, the Watford territory of going down. But Moyes got them playing and uh, they stayed up. But yeah, fuck knows why I went. I went ninth. For them, God knows. <laughs> I hate Watford. I absolutely hate Watford. And uh, I, I predicted they would finish 10th and they finished 18th. They got relegated on the last game of the season after going 3-0 down at half-time to Arsenal or 3-1 or whatever it is. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Finished 10th. <laughs> You fucked it, boys. You fucked it. <laughs> I said Wolves. I said Wolves would finish 11th. Um, I said they'd struggle with Europa League. They haven't. Um, they haven't struggled with Europa League at all. If anything, um, they've looked a lot more assured. I mean, Jimenez has played 50 games and scored 25 goals or something for Wolves this season. And they've still got potentially another three, I think. Obviously, Europa League. I think there's a quarter final against Man United coming up soon. So their season's still going. Um, fair play to them because their season also started like a year ago, a year and 10 days ago or something ridiculous. So credit to Wolves. Um, they proved me wrong. So fair play to them. Both. I went Burnley. Um, yeah, I mean, I weren't far off. They finished 10th. So, you know, I'm not going to crucify myself for that. Um, and that, and they, they had a solid season. You know, again, they were another team like Everton, like Southampton, who looked like they were in a position where they were going down early on in the season. And they just managed to come good and finish mid-table. Um, fair play to them. That's all you can really say. Fair play to them. Southampton, 13th. Um, Again, I weren't far off. They finished 11th. It, I, I say in my preview video that these are the sort of teams that are going to finish around this level. Didn't expect Everton to be in the middle of it. Uh, Southampton, Danny Ings did uh, a sterling job for them. I think it was 21 goals or 20 goals he ended with at the end of the season. And that's credit to a player that's had his injury doubts, has had his knocks in confidence, and he, and he did deliver for Southampton this season. There's no getting around that. So for me, yeah, credit to... Credit to Danny Ings. I think they'd have struggled without him this season. And he's certainly an area that I think they need to keep him um, and they need to hope that he can have another good season or go and get a striker who's going to chip in with more goals because I don't think Shay Adams has scored that many this season. So they still need goals if Ings goes back to being the old Ings. So, yeah, we'll see. I said Newcastle would finish 14th. Weren't far off 13th was where they actually finished again. Newcastle, again, they're just, uh, they've been inconsistent this season. You know, they were 2-0 down to Everton, they get 2-2 two -two draw, they beat Chelsea at home, but then they lose to, to other teams that you just don't expect them to lose to, like Watford, for example, and teams like that. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it kind of was one of them seasons for Newcastle. Be interested to see what happens. They've obviously potentially got a massive takeover. There could be a real force next season. Steve Bruce is sitting there waiting Cap in hand for all this money. We'll see what happens. Last thing I do say on Newcastle, though, which is, is a bit surprising. As I say, they will finish 10 points clear. Just go and look at the table. Go and look at the table. I said Villa would finish 15th. I praise their midfield, McGinn and Grealish. And look, I, I certainly think... Villa wouldn't have been in so much of a situation if they had McGinn for longer, because I, I do rate McGinn in the centre of the park. Grealish has been fantastic for him this season, no getting around it. We all knew he was going to have a good season, though. Uh, stepped up, just like Madison did from, from his championship days into the Leicester side. Stepped up and has been phenomenal for them. Um, what I would say about Leic uh, about Villa is they got the defence right at the end of the season. Um, 
and that's kept them up. There's no getting around it. They conceded a lot less goals after lockdown. They signed a lot of players last summer. They're going to want to push this season. But yeah, I'll predict that they'd finish 15th, but no, they finished 17th, so I'm not far off. At 16th, I went Brighton, um, and they would have finished 16th if they didn't win on the last game of the season. But uh, yeah, I, I went Brighton 16th. Another okay season for Brighton. They're going to want to pick up more wins next season. They only picked up nine wins, but they had 14 draws, which, which fundamentally carried them through. They had a lot less defeats than a lot of the teams around them. Everyone below them was almost touching you know, the twos rather than the ones. So um, yeah. I said Brighton would finish would finish sixteenth, so not far away. This is gonna piss off some Bournemouth fans because if this one goal actually counted for Sheffield United, this would be where they finished. I predicted Bournemouth would finish seventeenth. I'm not saying anything else. I said that they didn't have a good team. I said they had certain individuals that were good. Callum Wilson, Josh King, Ryan Fraser and Nathan Aki. And you take those players out of that team for any period of time and they would struggle. Callum Wilson has been injured and has not scored as many goals as you'd expect. Ryan Fraser didn't play, I think it's the last 10 games of the season. Nathan Aki's had injury problems all season. And Josh King has been very much on his own at times. Plus, he's had an injury. So, oh, 18th, I actually went Crystal Palace. Now, the reason I went Crystal Palace is because I thought Zaha would leave. And I, and they rely on Zaha a lot the season before. They haven't relied on Zaha as much. You know, Jordan Ayew's chipped in with goals. Milivojevic has scored some goals as well. You know, they've looked a better unit this season. Um, played very very boring football but they've looked better so credit to them because i got it wrong and just looking at the premier league table you know they actually finished oh i actually finished, thought they finished higher than that they actually finished 14th um but i actually thought they would finish i actually thought they finished higher i actually thought they finished above us without looking um but there you go there you go so they're not as good as i thought they'll be down next season when we have Zaha up the toughest. Now, this is a team that up until lockdown was very much in the race for Champions League football. And I predicted they would finish 19th. That's Sheffield United. I said they didn't have goals. Who knew that their centre-backs could play fucking overlapping centre-backs? What's that? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk about Sheffield United too much because they smashed it. They had a fantastic... First season in the Premier League, narrowly missing out on Europe, really, bearing in mind they were in it for so long. It was just the fact that they lost their last three games, that they weren't more in the in the run. Because, you know, that's nine points. If they'd have got if they'd have got six more points out of that, they'd have finished six. So they were not unlucky, but you know, they was what they was. And twentieth I went Norwich. Um whenever Norwich are in the Premier League, I always believe they'll finish twentieth. It's terrible, isn't it? It really is terrible. They started really well, Norwich. You know, they, I think they got seven points in the first... No, they got five points in their first three games, two draws and a win. Pookie turned up, looked like a man that was going to carry them 20 goals a season. You know, he, he looked like the guy that was going to get a mid-table and they bottled it. Um, however, they've got some great players. Max Aarons looks like he might be going to Munich. Todd Cantwell, I think everyone knows about him. Uh, Pookie probably would get a Premier League club. There's a few players in that team. Uh, Buendia is another good player. I'd take him. I would genuinely take him in the centre of the Everton midfield. So, uh, yeah, that was my Premier League predictions review, kind of. It was just shit. Like, I was so wrong on so many levels. <laughs> it was just... I mean, some of the points I made were, were right, so I'll give myself credit. That was just shit. Guys, I'll see you soon. Peace.